Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're just going to be doing a little chill painting and I'm going to talk about the process. Grab your sketchbook, grab your favorite art supplies, and draw and paint with me. Draw or paint with me. Um, put me on while you're doing some chores, I totally get it, I have to do that sometimes too. And uh, if you're new to my channel, we do a lot of art on this channel, we've done some reviews, some unboxings, um, just some other draw and paint with me. So if you like art content, go ahead and subscribe and let's just jump right into the video. So this piece is for my Creatures Great and Small prompt series. Um, there's 30 prompts and this is prompt number 24, I believe, and the prompt is Kingfisher. A kingfisher is a bird that I've really admired. It's a really inspiring animal to me. When I see one, I just want to draw it. But there's a catch. Um, I'm kind of scared to draw it. I don't really know why, but for about five years, and yes, five, five years, <laughs> I've wanted to draw one and I've never drawn one. And you might be like, well, why haven't you drawn it? You can totally draw it. Well, I was scared and I don't really know why I have no good reason other than the fact that I think it's just something that I really liked and I wanted to do a really good job on it the first time I drew it. I don't know if you're an artist as well, maybe there's something you want to draw and you feel scared to do it. Maybe you have a reason why, maybe you don't. I want to talk a little bit about how I finally came to draw something that I was scared to draw because I want to encourage you guys to do that as well. The whole point of this prompt series was for a couple reasons. One, I love drawing animals and I want to improve on that. It's something that I'm very passionate about in art. I love drawing animals. The second thing was I wanted to improve how quickly I can draw them doing some animal anatomy, as well as like details with paint and colors. But this art process was a big learning curve for me. So going into this, I put Kingfisher at 24 for a particular reason. I wanted it to be in far enough that I was getting used to drawing things I'm not quite familiar with because some of the other animals in this prompt series were also animals I hadn't drawn before and I will link the prompts below. I'll link it to my Instagram. If you want to see any of the other ones, I have videos. I can link those at the end of the video and up in the card as well. The Kingfisher was a really crucial one for me so I put it far enough in that it was like okay I kind of know what I'm doing now but not also at the end so it wasn't as high pressure as like, oh, it's the last one, I have to do super awesome on it. But you know, it ended up actually going pretty well. So for this one, I had to plan a process. For the other ones, I've kind of just sat down, drawn them, painted them. This one took me a couple of days. So I sat down and drew it. That was the first step. I was really proud of how the drawing came out and I was terrified to paint it because the drawing looked really good. And what if I ruin it by painting it? I'm sure you've had these thoughts before. If you haven't, am I all alone? <laughs> so I ended up planning this one out a little more. I do plan my art pieces out, but some of them I just sit down and do. So here's what I did. And if there's something that you're scared to paint or is a big challenge for you to paint, try these steps and let me know if they work because uh, they really worked for me. So what I did is I sat down, found some reference photos that I really liked. Um, I tried to figure out what position do I want this bird in? Um, what is it doing? So I found a couple different images and I sat down and drew a couple thumbnails. So then I took a step back, kind of just took a break from it. And then two days later, I came back and I started painting the bird. Now this is how I broke it up. First, I was gonna paint the background in one sitting. I knew what I wanted the background to be. That's the comfortable spot. That's the spot where I'm okay with messing up and not feeling like so high pressure. I didn't do a super detailed background on purpose. I wanted it to be, you know, an easy way to warm up. So I warmed up to the hard parts, or at least the hard parts that were hard for me. Um, so I did the background, I did the moss. It was really fun. It took a lot of layers. And with watercolors, you want to go light to dark. Um, but I did end up layering a little bit of yellow on top to get a texture because moss is kind of a tricky thing for me to paint. Um, but I, I liked how it turned out. Everything looked great. So I was ready to move into the bird, the hard part, the scary part. Ah. So I did some color blocking and then I started doing detail work on a spot I was comfortable. 
So there's this little uh, section on the wing. I don't remember what it's called, but it has the little protruding feather. So I decided to paint that. It looked pretty simple. It was a kind of a detailed spot in a section where there wasn't a whole lot. I painted the face because the face is something that I knew I would enjoy painting and it didn't look as hard or as... Um, I've drawn a lot of birds, painted a lot of birds, and so I was familiar with how to get colors and textures around the face. So I ended up painting that. I had a ton of fun painting it. I, like I said, I took this in small little sections and steps where I wasn't overwhelmed. And if I felt overwhelmed, I didn't stop because if I stopped, I might not pick the brush up again. But I would just kind of take a breather, grab some water or a peach tea, love me some peach tea. I would come back and be like, okay, I can do it. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it did. Sometimes when you're like in and getting down and hurting your neck, getting those small, tiny little details, all of a sudden everything looks horrible, but it wasn't as bad as I was thinking. So I would take like a really small, and I mean like a really small two, three minute break and just come back. That worked really well for this process and the little step-by-step -step made it way more achievable. Um, this did take me two days to paint. I stayed up really late painting and I don't remember where I stopped, but that's not important. Painted everything I was comfortable with. The wing that's protruding up was a little bit of a challenge angle-wise, but it turned out decent to me. And then I moved on to the scary part, which is the fanned out feathers. So feathers are such a beautiful, intricate, detailed thing. They're sort of transparent, but not in the reference photos I had. So I was really scared to paint them and I wanted them to look really good. And I wanted to, you know, fan them out correctly in the right position. So after I had finally painted everything that I was comfortable with, it was the part I was the most scared of. But I went in with it with patience and just being like, okay, I can do this. I'm warmed up. You kind of get in a groove while you're doing art and you just kind of like lose yourself in the art, which is why it's so fun. Like losing yourself in the art process is such a fun thing. It's kind of a time vortex though, because you don't know how much time is passing, um, but that's okay. It was really fun. And that's a key element to this. This challenge, this thing that I was really scared of was fun for me. Like I wasn't, I wasn't dreading everything. And when I was getting, you know, nervous about how something was looking, I was doing proper steps to not let the fear conquer my painting. I ended up being really proud of how it all turned out. And to treat myself, I started painting the eye. Now I usually paint the eye at the end because it's just something that I like to do. It's the funnest part to me, painting the eye gives it life. Um, I also pull out some white gouache. I'm using Dollar Ronnie watercolors for this, which I will also link in the description. And I'll link some of my brushes as well. I never used pure white for this because I didn't want um, that punchiness because it doesn't actually have pure white in any of the reference photos, but I did want a bright color. So I muted it with some just other watercolors like blue or orange or whatever, wherever it was necessary. And then I moved on to the orange part, which I actually saved an easier part for last on purpose. The orange part was, you know, just using little brush strokes blending some colors together, layering light to dark. I started with kind of a yellowish orange, went to some orangish colors, uh, and then had some burnt umber mixed in with a little bit of other colors that I don't remember. Um, and I put those down. It was a really easy part, but I saved it for last because I knew it would be an easy painting process and I wouldn't feel stressed out about it. I had already done the harder sections and it was just like a race to the end. I don't mean race as in like I rushed through it. I took my time with it. It was fun. And when I was done, I was so proud of it. I had conquered a fear of painting a particular inspiring animal to me that for some reason I could just never do. And I did it and I was so proud of myself. I am so proud of myself. Yes, it is kind of small. It's on an eight by eight uh, in my sketchbook. It's a nice sketchbook. I knew I could do it that way if it was smaller and an attainable size. So I did it. Woo! So I want to challenge you guys to paint something that you're scared or if you don't paint, draw or use markers or whatever medium it is that you do as an artist. Let's try this out. I want to see if this method worked. So the building blocks are find your reference photos, make a few thumbnail sketches, 
break it into sections. Once you've drawn it, if you need to take a break, take a break. If you're painting or coloring or whatever it is you're doing, do it in sections. Start off with something that you're comfortable with. If it's the background, if it's like a certain appendage, whatever it is that you know you're most comfortable with, start there and then build up to the harder section. If you want to save the harder section to the end, go for it. I wanted to save that for next to the end and that way, you know, I'm building up and then I can kind of come back down to something I'm more comfortable with. And then when I'm done, it's kind of this satisfying, comforting feeling. And then look at what you did and appreciate that you just did something that you were scared to do or nervous to do and just give yourself a pat on the back. So um, I'm really proud of how this turned out. I might sell prints of this eventually when I get a shop open. I hope I can get a shop open soon. But yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of this painting. So I wanna encourage you, if you're an artist and you're going through something similar that I was going through, try these steps, see if they help you conquer that fear, see if they help you at least start going towards that end goal, that big piece you wanna do. Practice doing it in smaller sections, keep it simple, color block, make thumbnails, do everything you can, plan ahead to make the big project easier. Taking on something like that can be really intimidating, but when you break it down into little steps, it helps you conquer that fear easier. And then you can feel really proud of your end result, not just because you painted it and it looks awesome, but because you did something that you were scared to do or that you thought you might not be able to do. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below what you were doing during this video. If you were doing chores or something, that's totally fine. I love hanging out with you guys. If you drew something, let me know what you were drawing uh, or if you were painting, I would love to know. And if you guys wanna see more content like this, let me know down in the comments as well. I will have those links in the description for you guys to check out. And if you wanna see any of the other paintings, I will also have those linked as well. Um, thank you guys for being here today and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye and happy creating.